Hey folks, how's everybody doing out there? Uh, we have just had the most glorious summer weekend here in London, uh, lots of nice sunny afternoons and pub beer gardens, and it has left me in no mood to talk about anything serious today. So in this video, we are going to learn some JavaScript. Now, how many of you folks out there know about WAT? Uh, if you don't know about WAT, there's a fantastic video by Gary Bernhard where he explores all of these weird and wonderful edge cases of a whole bunch of mainstream programming languages. But this video, this is 100% pure JavaScript because if you are looking for WAT and <laughs> weird and wonderful edge cases, JavaScript is a rich casket of treasures. Now, just so we're clear, I love JavaScript. I think it's a really powerful, elegant language. The fact that you can write some JavaScript code, upload it to a website, and literally anybody on the planet can click on a link and run your code without having to download and install anything, that's pretty amazing, you know? And when you add in all of the browser APIs that exist now, we've got audio, MIDI, 3D graphics, sockets, you can build some really, really wonderful things. Uh, there is even an accelerometer API in browsers now, which means you can write a web page that changes color every time you throw your phone in the air. Now, JavaScript was designed to be friendly which means there's a whole lot of things which will return a valid result in JavaScript that would crash or would throw an exception in most other languages. If you want to divide by zero, yeah, that's fine, it's infinity. If you want to divide by negative zero, that's negative infinity. The string hello minus the string world, nan, not a number. But to get this degree of robustness, the language designers made a whole bunch of decisions which uh, Let's go with may cause side effects. This is a perfectly valid chunk of JavaScript code. Over the next couple of minutes, we're going to pull this apart and we're going to see what it does. But first, let's remind ourselves here of a couple of basics. JavaScript has objects. A JavaScript object is a set of key value pairs. The keys are strings. The values can be just about anything. They can be strings, numbers, functions, other objects. Uh, if you worked with JSON, that's JavaScript object notation. Yeah, you know all about JavaScript objects. And if you can have an object, it stands to reason you can have an empty object, right? Now, JavaScript has arrays. You declare an array with square brackets, like one, two, three. And so you can also have empty arrays. And JavaScript has strings except the strings are kind of also arrays because you can pick characters out of a string by putting an array index on the end of it. And of course, you can have an empty string. Now, JavaScript introduced the world to a wonderful concept called truthiness. The only thing in JavaScript that is absolutely, positively, 100% true is the value true. But comparing things to true all the time, that can get really tedious. So quite a lot of things in JavaScript are truthy. It's like uh, the bit in Star Wars where Obi-Wan says to Luke that uh, what I told you was true from a certain point of view. It's all about how you look at them. Now, in JavaScript, the logical not operator is an exclamation mark. This means not true, which is false. This means not false, which is true. This means not three. Lots of things aren't three. I am not three. Elephants aren't three. The moon is not three. But in JavaScript, not means figure out if the thing you provided, the operand, is truthy and give us the logical opposite of that. The only things in JavaScript which are falsy are undefined, null, not a number, nan, zero, the empty string, and false itself. Everything else is truthy, which means that not the empty string is true because the empty string is falsy. Not the empty array, that's false, but not not the empty array, that's true again. Now, when you start adding things together, JavaScript gets really interesting. If both of the things you're adding, both operands, are numbers, JavaScript adds the numbers together. One plus two equals three. If the things you're adding can be coerced into being numbers, then it will turn them into numbers and then add those. So true coerces to one. So true plus true is two. But as we've already seen, you can get true by doing not not the empty array. So not not empty plus not not empty plus not not empty equals three. And if JavaScript can't turn the operands into numbers, it'll turn them into strings and glue the strings together. So true plus the empty array, well, JavaScript won't turn arrays into numbers, so the empty array becomes the empty string, and true plus the empty string is the string true, T-R-U-E. 
Uh, by the way, there's one thing folks love to throw into leet code type questions, and that's this one. What's the empty object plus the empty string? Well, this is actually a trick question. The way it's written here, this is not an expression. This is a program consisting of an empty block and then a positive empty string. The block does nothing, and the positive, the plus sign, that turns the empty string into a number, which is zero, and uh, because the, I think because the empty string's false and false evaluates to, anyway. So to actually add the empty object to the empty string, you need to wrap the whole thing in parentheses like this, and that gives you the string object object inside some square brackets. All right, so you remember that the empty string is false, so not the empty string is true, and true plus true is two, yeah? So now we take our first expression, and we use our second expression as an indexer, we get the letter B. Write that down. Next, we are going to take the sum of the empty array and not the empty string divided by the empty array. That gives us the string infinity, because obviously that's what it does. And if we take not, not the empty array plus not not the empty object plus not the empty string, that gives us three. And if we use one of those to index the other, we get the letter I. Write that down. In JavaScript, a pair of angle brackets like this, this is a bit shift operator. Turn the left operand into a series of bits, shuffle all those bits to the left, and because computers use binary, shifting a number to the left by one bit, that actually multiplies it by two. Shifting it the other way, that will divide it by two. So if we take the number one, we shift it left to get the number two, and of course, we don't need to use the actual number one. We can use not not the empty array. So if we take not the empty array, add the empty string, wrap it in brackets, stick our bit shifted not not empty array into the index, we get the letter L. Write that down. Let's meet the bitwise OR operator. Now, I'm sure you've all seen the logical OR in JavaScript. It's two vertical pipes. Well, if you only use one vertical pipe, that will take each operand, turn it into a number, expand the number into a series of bits, do a logical OR on each separate column of bits, and turn the answer back into a number. Look, this stuff was a big deal back in the 1960s when computers had one kilobyte of RAM and they ran so slowly you could literally watch them tick. And so obviously JavaScript had to include all of these in case anybody ever needed to port it to the PDP-11 mini computer or something. Anyway, bitwise OR. So this means we can take, say, four or two or one, and it'll or up all the bits and give us the answer, which is seven. But, you know, using numbers here, that makes it a bit obvious. So instead, we are going to use bit shifted empty arrays. So now we can take not not the empty object, divide it by the empty array, add the empty string, wrap the whole lot in parentheses, drop that in as our indexer, and we get the letter Y, because that's the seventh character in the string infinity, in case you're wondering. Write that down. Now, you remember our leet code question, that the answer was object, object. We want to pull the literal space out of the middle of object, object, which happens to also be at index number seven. So we can use the same array indexer as before, and there is our literal space. Write that down. How do you write down a space? That sounds like a U problem. All right. The empty array divided by itself is not a number, nan. And not nan is true, and true shifted by true is two, and two bitwise ord with nan, not nan, is three. And so if we take our leet code expression and drop in that three as the array indexer, we get the letter j. Write that down. Now, take the leet code object string, object object, drop in plus not the empty string as the array indexer, and that's gonna give us the letter o. Take not the empty array, which is false, Add it to the empty string, which will give us the string false, and then we're dropping an array indexer, which is not not the empty array bit shifted by itself twice, which gives us the letter E. Which means that the value of this expression here is obviously the string Billy Joel. Now, if that's left you in the mood for a little bit of uh, Billy Joel flavored JavaScript silliness, check out the video link in the description. And if not, folks, I hope you found that interesting. And please never use this kind of code in production. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. You folks have a good week out there. You take it easy, look after each other, and I will catch you next time. Bye-bye.